Hi everyone, my name's Sam and I'm a Notion consultant and certified Notion expert. But that wasn't always the case. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how you can become a Notion consultant without any experience and the steps you can take to land that very first gig. So back in June of last year, I just graduated from university and I was looking to start a new job or a new uh, sort of side hustle um, but I didn't want to commit myself to anything and I wanted to do something that I really had a passion for. That's when I came across a video by Ali Abdul uh, where he talks about becoming a Notion consultant. I had no idea you could make money from Notion uh, and so I was really excited by the prospect and in that exact video he had a rating score uh, where he rated how difficult it was um, to start each side hustle he talks about in the video. And for this particular section about being a Notion consultant, I think he rated every single uh, category one out of five in terms of being one is easy, five is difficult. So after that video, I was really excited by the prospect of becoming a Notion consultant. But what I quickly learned is it's a little bit more difficult than you may think. So in this video, I'm going to share all the things I wish I knew at the start of becoming a Notion consultant. And at the end of the video, I'll talk exactly step by step uh, how I did it and my own personal experience. So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you're already a bit of a Notion fanboy or girl. But uh, if you're not, then there's loads and loads of resources uh, here on YouTube that you can use to learn Notion uh, about its databases, its advanced features and how you can start building out dashboards. One recommendation I would make is to seek out Marie Poulin. Uh, she's got videos here on YouTube, but she also runs a uh, course called Notion Mastery. And I think it's normally targeted towards uh, business individuals that have more money to spend. Uh, but what I did was apply for her scholarship and she kindly gave me access to the course completely for free. Um, so I would su definitely suggest uh, trying that. While you can learn a lot here on YouTube about how to do things on Notion, uh, Marie is really good in going to the why and uh, the thinking behind um, how to relate databases together and how to uh, build dashboards for particular processes and workflows. So once you have a good understanding of Notion, you can test your knowledge against the two foundational certificates that Notion offer. I believe it's the Notion Essentials badge and the Settings and Sharings badge. Now, while these are only the foundation badges, don't underestimate them. I failed the Essentials badge the first time that I took it. But what's good about these certificates is while you're trying to become a consultant uh, with no experience, uh, they represent a kind of social proofing for your future clients. My next piece of advice sounds a little bit strange, but it's to make sure you understand what a Notion consultant does. If you're anything like me, you're using Notion just for your personal use and creating uh, things very specific to what you're doing. So for example, I was at university, so I was using it to track and manage my class notes. I'm also a budding screenwriter, so I was using it to um, plot out my scripts. But that's not exactly what you'll be using it for when you're a Notion consultant. You'll do yourself a world of favours if you go and seek out um, a little bit of knowledge about uh, operations, about uh, business processes and workflows, about uh, org charts. Because while there are still some uh, gigs you'll be doing that are for uh, personal productivity or for very unique uh, use cases, the majority of work you'll be getting are businesses and entrepreneurs that are looking to uh, systemize their uh, growing businesses within Notion. Some channels I would recommend here on YouTube are CEO Entrepreneur and Layla at Process Driven. I would also recommend Daniel Knosa. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he's got an entire YouTube channel about um, Notion specifically for businesses. The second small caveat to this be sure to understand what a Notion consultant does is to be sure to understand what Notion's limits are. Now, while Notion is super customizable and flexible and you can build pretty much anything in it, you should understand when you should build a dashboard. I would say first and foremost, Notion is good at being a company wiki and for storing the uh, SOPs and processes for companies. So I would recommend first learning how to create good company wikis and SOP libraries and then moving out to the more complex dashboards like CRMs, uh, project managers or maybe content dashboards.
So once you have a strong understanding of what Notion does and how to use it, and once you've got a foundational understanding of business operations and processes, it's time to go and seek your first client. And I'm gonna take a little bit of advice that I found from a Ali Abdul video, which is to do it for free and without permission. While you've got your uh, two certificates, you have no social backing. So to go out and find a client and uh, try and get them to pay for your services is gonna be quite a challenge. Instead, what you can do is approach local businesses or reach out to businesses online and offer your services for free. Now, what will give you a good head start is if you start building out uh, beta versions of these dashboards in your own notion which you can then use as uh, portfolio items to show these businesses. Even better is if you do some research into the business and then create them a custom Notion space that you think will benefit them. And while you're making your first headway into becoming a Notion consultant, you can do the second thing I stole from Ali, which is to build in public. You can make a Twitter account and start sharing your experiences including the highs, the lows and the in-betweens. And finally, once you've received that first client, and you will if you are approaching them with portfolio items, with solid research about their company, it's time to actually do the work. And you're gonna wanna try and do a good job because what we're trying to glean from these clients is of course not money, but that first testimonial that's gonna be the first piece in getting your first paid client. So once you have a free gig under your belt, it's time to start seeking out paid gigs. There's a multitude of uh, freelance platforms uh, on the internet, uh, but the two I would recommend are Upwork and Fiverr. Now each platform works slightly differently, so that's why I would recommend that you pick a platform and really try to master it. For example, on Upwork, there tends to be larger clients and longer contracts and you have to go and uh, submit proposals for job postings. Whereas alternatively, Fiverr tend to be smaller clients, smaller contracts, and the clients come to you. So really what you want to do is pick a platform and learn all of the nuances that is gonna put you in the best stead for landing your first client. For Upwork, I would recommend the YouTube channel uh, by Evan Fisher. He's a real uh, pro when it comes to Upwork. And I believe he has uh, a little small tip about uh, the process uh, for uh, constantly applying to clients when you first join. I believe it's called 3x3x3, three by three by three. Uh, but essentially it's a little system uh, that encourages you to uh, contact clients every single day. And for Fiverr, I would recommend Carrie Blogger. Uh, and the tip that I would most push forward is to create a Fiverr video that will hopefully push you up in the listings. So with a bit of luck and uh, very low prices, you will eventually be contacted by your first client. And the key here is to be responsive and professional uh, while you have your first back and forths. There's a ton of videos about um, how to be uh, managing this uh, relationship between clients. Uh, but the main thing is that you want uh, to be creating a, what they call a call to action which essentially means if you're on Upwork, you'll uh, be trying to encourage them to jump on a call with you uh, and on Fiverr the same, unless they just want to message through the uh, messaging platform. And eventually you'll get booked in your first call, which is kind of like an interview. And I say kind of, because this is not a typical interview that you might be expecting. In the freelancer client relationship, uh, there's less emphasis on the freelancer needing to know a ton of research about the company or trying to really sell themselves. While you are still trying to sell yourself, what's more important is you're trying to qualify everything that they're saying on the call and learn from them what exactly it is they're after to see if you're a good fit or if you can actually complete the project. Across the course of being a Notion consultant, I've uh, come up with a kind of framework that I use for all of my calls, uh, which I'll go over now, but definitely could have been explored in an entire video to itself. So I tend to open my calls um, explaining a little bit about me and my experience with Notion and previous clients. Then at the top of the call I like to confirm the requirements that we have spoke about in our back and forths. Then I jump into some general questions about the company, for example uh, what the company size is, uh, how many employees there are, uh, what the main functional areas or departments are of the company. Then as the conversation starts to flow, I start to ask some more deeper questions uh, specific to the processes and to what exactly they want to achieve in Notion. And at the end of the call, if there's time, I like to demo some of uh, my own Notion uh, to give them a sense of what is possible. 
and I usually tailor this to what I found out on the call. Now, depending on the nature of the call, uh, they might be happy to go ahead and um, say they're ready to sign the contract. Uh, but in other cases, you might have to uh, give them a quote there and then, or if you prefer, you can give them a quote after the call. But the main thing is you need to give them a kind of scope of work of what the budget's gonna be, what the timeline will be, and what the deliverables will be. But the main thing is, don't worry, I know this is a super scary part of the journey. I uh, recently had a call uh, where they were actually interviewing for an ops management more than an ocean consultant, and I'd kind of uh, misinterpreted what exactly the job was. And I got on the call, and to be honest, got completely schooled by the lady who has conducted it. She was very nice and she taught me a lot about how to um, conduct proper interviews. But as I've said, usually these aren't the typical interviews you're used to. And it's more about showcasing your knowledge and trying to understand exactly what they want on this particular project. Finally, once the call has ended, you'll want to make sure to follow up with your clients. Sometimes things can just go radio silent because you haven't. And what I tend to do is uh, write up uh, the interview notes about what we've spoke about, and then under that, give them a kind of scope of work slash proposal um, written. So basically I say, uh, what the main outcome of the project is, what the deliverables will be, the timeline, the budget, um, and then uh, maybe some initial ideas about what I think uh, could be uh, useful for them. And then really from there, it's about sitting back and crossing your fingers. Uh, no, it's not. It's about pushing forward. So you may get that job, but you may not, but it's about being proactive and keep on seeking out new, uh, new clients. And the more of these uh, interviews you do, the better you'll get at it. And then eventually um, it's second nature and you'll kind of have them uh, key questions uh, in your head ready to fire. So there are all my tips. Uh, and in the last part of this video, I wanna talk through exactly how I got my first gig. Um, because although I've kind of followed some of the tips, uh, some of the things went wrong and there's some key little bits of uh, insight that I think could be useful. So as I said, before I even knew Notion Consulting was a thing, uh, I was a massive Notion nerd and uh, had already been building out lots of different dashboards and use cases. Once I committed to trying to become a Notion Consultant, I started building out kind of beta versions of the dashboards I might be building for future clients. So I think I did a project manager, uh, an OKR dashboard, uh, a CRM uh, and a content dashboard, I believe. What I actually ended up doing was purchasing uh, the remote OS template from Daniel Canosa um, and having a look through there to see exactly how um, business systems were made in Notion. And then I used that as an example to start making uh, my family friends uh, Notion HQ. So after that initial heavy lift, uh, I delivered the HQ to my family friend and she was actually really happy with it and started using it right away. Because she was happy um, with what she received, uh, I then set up an Upwork account and asked her to write me a testimonial, uh, which I then attached to Upwork. So if um, your clients have used Upwork before, you can actually uh, officially link it through Upwork, which is a benefit of the platform. And then during that time, I kind of did a combination of uh, tweeting about um, what I was doing, uh, trying to get my first Notion, Notion certificates and as well as uh, contacting clients every single day uh, on Upwork using Evan Fisher's uh, model for um, uh, the habit of contacting clients. One reason you might consider um, Upwork over Fiverr for your first platform is because you can be um, more proactive and seek out the clients yourself and during this stage where it's kind of tumbleweeds it's nice to feel like you're actually doing something each day uh, that's pushing you towards uh, what you're after rather than kind of creating a Fiverr gig and then sitting back and waiting. And then through a bit of luck and super low prices, I was contacted by my first uh, client uh, about 12 at night and responded straight away uh, to make sure that we could arrange a call for the following morning. I took that call kind of, again, doing a bit of guesswork about the kind of questions I should be asking. It ended up uh, the client had a pretty complicated business model. And so a lot of the call was mostly the client trying to explain exactly what the business does, but as well as trying to explain what he wanted from me. I believe on the call, uh, the client said uh, he was happy to move forward 
but um, I then followed up with him uh, the next day with some interview notes and with um, the scope of work. The other thing I think that helped me land this very first client is my Twitter. He said that um, he actually saw on my Twitter a tweet I said about uh, you, it's no good creating Notion dashboards without understanding the actual system you're trying to uh, replicate first. So it's definitely worth having a bit of an online presence, even if it's just 50 followers um, at the start, because it then is another bit of social proofing to see that you're uh, passionate and that you're part of the community. And just to give you an idea of what that first client can do for you, we had a two week trial period, and then he then signed up for another three month contract um, and we still work together to this day. So I hope this has been useful. Um, I do really recommend trying to become a Notion consultant if you are already passionate about Notion. Um, this is now my full daytime job uh, and I absolutely love it. Not only does it provide me the flexibility to do things uh, working from home, but it's also started to give me a taste about what it's like running your own business. Uh, and how to deal with clients and all them sort of life skills are super valuable. So guys, if you like this video, you might be interested in this one here. And if you found this useful, please do consider subscribing and uh, liking this video. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, thank you, bye-bye.